Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to the stream. I forgot to hit uh, the repeat button on the song, and so we started getting into some really creepy music there. But that's okay, it's whatever. Sometimes we need some creepy music, you know? Sometimes it's necessary. <laughs> Yeah, it's all dark tide music. It's very good. Foreshadowing? Foreshadowing for like things being creepy? Maybe. Potentially. Creepy music ain't bad. That's what I'm saying. I'm gonna re do this really fast. Anyway, welcome everybody. Hello. Um. We're doing Geek Enders today because I wound up having to cancel on Friday. I um, literally, right as I clicked start on my stream on Friday, I got a call that was not a fun call at all. And I was like, it's okay though. I can push through and still stream. I've just got to, you know, do some stuff later in the day and then uh to like sort all of this out and then i the second that i sat down to try and like start <laughs> it's like i can't <laughs> never mind never mind i'm just not going to so uh yeah that's why i vanished on friday but fortunately um, Jules and Jesse were able, 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 were able to move everything to today. I made coffee and it's just like, okay, which is not ideal. <laughs> it's just, it's just all right, you know? <sighs> Anywho, happy Sunday to everyone. Um, I've been trying to figure out what we should do next week because we're not doing we're not doing banishers anymore except once a week. Um, trying to figure out what we should move on to. I have zero interest in playing Rebirth on stream. Um, my numbers have been really low with Banishers, which is fair because we've been playing that game for a while. And it's very story based. And if you missed a little bit, you show up and you're like, what's going on? So that's fine. That's totally fair. Uh, Rebirth, people, the, people are getting terrible numbers with Rebirth. No, ma'am. <laughs> so, Helldivers, sure. But um, I can't get a group together for Helldivers unless it is, like, late. Late, late night times. So, that's not a, like, normal stream time sort of a thing. I have, I've played Balatro, and honestly, I'm not a huge fan. So many of my friends were like, holy fuck, you are going to love Balatro. And I, and I've played it. And it's, I don't know why it's just not for me. I'm, I don't enjoy it very much. Which is so surprising to me because, like, um, so it might have even been in our Discord. Somebody posted a thing where uh, the title was like, 
the creator of Bellatro is figuring out how to make it work on mobile to ruin all of our lives. Sort of the, implying that like people literally can't stop playing it. And I was like, I don't, I don't get it. I do not get it. The, the hype is lost on me with Bellatro for some reason. Yeah, it's a game that on paper, I'm like, yeah, I'll, t I'll probably love that game. And I, I don't know. We played the shit out of Hades, yeah. I'm very much looking forward to Hades too. It's like when everyone was singing the praises of Monster Train, it never clicked for me. Monster Train definitely is one of my faves, yeah. But, you know, with, with these games that become, like, really addictive, um, they're, they just can't, they can't satisfy everybody. You know, there's going to be some of us that are like, this? <laughs> this guy? Oh yeah, I can definitely look through the channel point list for sure. Plague Tale games are great. I have played Peglin a bunch off stream since last time that I played it on stream, so. I've played all of the Trine games. Yeah, I've, a lot of that stuff I've done. We've played against the storm. That period of time in my life, that like one year or so where I was playing a new game every day um, we really, we, we banged out some shit. Yeah. <laughs> I still haven't tried Terra Nil. No, I really should. Yeah, we played the, um, the demo for Thaumaturge and it looked interesting for sure. But you're right. It's, it would be another like fantasy story mystery game thing, you know. I commissioned some bees 38. Dude. Was it this was it I'm trying to remember if it was if it was 2023 or not. But it was very funny. Whatever year I played a buckload of those ga those games. Um, it was really funny going back through the games that I had played for that year and having to scroll through like 14, I commissioned some bees games. <laughs> yes, we've played a bunch of shadow gambit. We played all of on guard. Book of Demons, I don't remember. Oh, it's a hack and slash? Wait. This looks really familiar. <laughs> I Yeah, I've played it. <laughs> Yes, oh my gosh. I've, yes, I've played a bunch of this. <laughs> I couldn't remember the name. And then when I looked it up, I was like, wait a minute. And then I looked it up on Steam and was like, yeah, I've played that. <laughs> Most of the games I've played recently are things that I saw you play first. 
There's a sh there's a short game that we really liked the demo of called Venba. I didn't realize that it came out. Um, so that might be a nice game to play that would only take one stream, I think. Um, yeah. I thought I probably would have missed a bunch of shit um, playing Banishers for so long. And there's stuff like Dice Folk and Spirit Fall and stuff like that. <laughs> we played Cocoon, yeah. Yeah, Venbo would be good. Um, change of pace, just one and done sort of scenario. Because I think it takes like three hours to play, so we could we could slap that out tomorrow easy. <clears throat> I've played Chicken Police. <laughs> I've played Chicken Police. I'm excited for the second one though. Thirsty Suitors, I can't play because I promised to play it with somebody else. Just a quick 100-hour BG3 stream. In and out. In and out. 100-hour getting, you know? <laughs> Time for the Apex Legends Esports Pro Era. You say that? I got asked if I wanted to be in an Apex tournament. <laughs> and I was like, depends. I said that I was super down uh, because it would be for like um, amateurs, right? I was like, I'm super down, but um, they choose the teams and the the brand deal would be like like multiple um like practice streams leading up to the actual tournament and i was like do i get any heads up at all about who i'm playing with and they said no <laughs> and i was like i'm not committing i'm not committing to like four or five like long distance streams with people that i don't know because or like it doesn't, I don't have to know them, but to be able to even look them up, right? <laughs> to be like, what kind of people are they? Like, I just, I don't want to lock myself into that, <laughs> you know? How even is Apex these days? They've added a bunch of characters. I have a lot of fun with Apex every time I play it, to be totally honest. Hi, John. Yeah, you know what? It Apex started off really strong. I feel like it petered out a little bit, but still had like a consistent player base. Um, they kept adding in like really good characters with good voice acting. Um, it's just been like a consistency game with them, I feel like, and they're doing a big push right now to get people back into playing. And it's worked because they people come back and go, holy shit, there's so much in this game now, <laughs> you know? <laughs> bum 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 <coughs> Case cracker I don't think so. Let me see. I'm so this is the problem is I'm so bad at game names. Case cracker. Doesn't look like it. Mm. 
the true detection system with the black robe company as a tester complete the cracking of a case under the rules of the system. Oh, interesting. It's one of those like find the right information to get the right answer sort of games. Yeah, that's a great question. I would say based on um, the amount of time that it takes us to play things typically and the attention span of all of us, um, 10 hours is ideal. 15 hours is kind of like the ceiling. Um We've done 20 hour stuff before and, and it's been fine if it's like really fun, you know, but, um, in terms of like not seeing a significant view drop off and getting through the game for sure, 10 to 15 hours is good. Oh my gosh, can I be honest with you? I fucking, I hate Rocket League. <laughs> I've never enjoyed that game. I had to play that game so many times on um, Friendzone way back in the day. I had to play that game so many times on Friendzone and every time I was like, fuck, I'm so bad at this game. <laughs> But I also, I do think it's probably, not to say that I wasn't with friends, but like Sam has a lot of fun with it because it's, it's just him playing it with a bunch of goobers on Discord, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah. The tutorials are very necessary, I think. Have the tutorials always been there? I definitely never did a tutorial. That's so true. Sam thrives in toxicity. That is so true. Oh my God. So forever ago, we got Sam a um, alarm bracelet that's meant to like shock you to wake you up because he just sleeps through alarms like crazy. Um, and I was like, we've got to figure something out here, dude. <laughs> you know, like, have you tried using the, the watch yet? And he was like, no, I'll set it up today. Um, and I'll, I'll try it out today when you start work. Actual today, right? So... I went up there uh, to be like, hey, I'm starting work. And he was wide awake, sitting up in bed. And I was like, oh, my gosh, look at you. You're awake. And he was like, fuck that watch. <laughs> yeah, he goes, that thing blew my fucking hand off. <laughs> that hurt so bad. <laughs> I was like, what did you have it set to? He was like, 80%. I was like, turn that down. What are you talking about? I got the idea of getting this watch from Tiri. Tiri also sleeps like the dead, so to speak, um, and does not wake up with alarms. And so she got a shock watch to wake her up. And she said you, you do over time get like too used to it <laughs> if you're not also like making sure to, you know, like the second that it happens, like sit up and like do things to get into the habit of, of waking up at that time. Right. She said, you can after a while, just start ignoring it. Um, so I found that so funny. Sam was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Wide awake now, dude. I like the idea of testing at 80% power with no idea what that means. 
Yeah. Uh, it's a Pavlock, yeah. They're not, they're not cheap, just so you know. Um... But woke Sam up real fucking quick, dude. Or set a regular alarm just before the shock alarm. Well, so that's the thing, right? Is that um, from what I read, you can set it. I'm positive that that he just sammed and and just went too hard too fast, right? Um, because from what I read, you should be able to set it up so that it like just vibrates first. And then shocks, because eventually the hope is that the vibration would make you go, fuck, <laughs> you'd get up and take off the watch, right? So that you don't get electrocuted. <laughs> We've played World of Horror. We haven't played um we haven't played it since it released though. I mean, I we didn't wait for release. Sorry, I'm sorry if that was confusing. We played a bunch of it. Well, it was a demo. <laughs> Okay, let's in, instead of this whole stream being have you played this? Have you played this? Have you played this? If you if there's a game that you think I absolutely should play, Suggest it with points because I will be going through that, okay? <clears throat> if you suggest something I've already played, I'll just give your points back. It's, it's no sweat. Do you know when we'll do Dracula? We should do Dracula soon. It's been too long. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if anything weird is going on this week. If it's not, we should read Dracula this week. Do I know where Dracula is, though? That was one of the original reasons that we didn't do Dracula is because it was packed. <laughs> I should be able to find it, yeah. I wouldn't I will not be playing Grandia again, yeah. No. <laughs> bum 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 On a on a side note, I was 
I was talking about my office and I was like, I just really want to get my office together. And Sam was like, yeah, what's the hold up with that? I was like, the shelf. He was like, oh, did you take it apart? Yeah, months ago. It's just waiting to come up the stairs. And he was like, oh, my bad. <laughs> my sweet love. <laughs> This. This. <laughs> yeah, what is the holdup exactly? Okay, time to start giving points back. <laughs> Minesweeper, get out of here. Stream the bookshelf build. It's not, it doesn't need to, it's, it's just two pieces in order for it to get down the stairs. That's why it had to be taken apart. It's, it's, it got unscrewed in half, basically, so that it can go down the stairs. I was talking with Sam about the, the we talked a lot last night. It was a very nice date night. Um, I was talking with Sam about, about the, the mushroom about my, my mush tuber. And I was like, yeah, I think it's going to be a really long time before like that design and the, and the model gets done and stuff. And he was like, I mean, because I had talked with summer and summer was like, I know lots of people that do just like, just like tiny, tiny goofy models. Right. Um, which if you ever watch summer, you know, is truth. <laughs> They're like, yeah, you should just get like a, you should just get like a, a, a tiny thing done until the big thing is done. And so Sam was like, yeah, who cares? Just, just have like a tiny weird mushroom thing made. And then, and then you can like actually debut the big cool mushroom thing. <laughs> and I was like, that's fair. They don't necessarily have to look the same. <laughs> We are having Geek Enders on a Sunday, yeah. I saw a few people like, why isn't a Geek Enders episode up on Jesse's channel? Yeah. <laughs> What's that all about? <laughs> Literally, I was like, it might be cute because I, you know, I have like the general elements. So it might be cute for it to be like, like a have like a tiny mushroom thing that's the 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 weird little baby model and then it's almost like that grew into the big model what did happen um i would say to keep it vague i had a really upsetting phone call like right as stream was starting on friday and I was like, it's fine. I can push through. And then I sat down and needed to like actually start the stream and realized I should not be streaming right now. Um, and knew that there was some stuff that I needed to take care of relating to that call around the time of Geek Enders. So I messaged both of them being like, I'm so sorry. Can we do this at another time? Unfortunately, both Jules and Jesse were free today at the same time so there you go <laughs> you're right i should yeah 
I should have I should have just hopped in there and been like, yeah, what's the holdup, Jesse? <laughs> what the fuck is going on here, dude? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just it's just private family stuff. We're working on it. It's okay. Regular Geek Ender's time, but happening today instead of Friday, yeah. Yeah, I'm very glad. Originally, we were like, we'll just do it Saturday. But that didn't work. And I was like, oh, no. So, fortunately, one of these days worked. And my mother-in-law is doing a big old roast and inviting everybody over. So, it was very easy for me to be like, I have to work. But... I have two family members that would love to come over for a roast. I was wondering if you were the same person as Leah Maria. I am not. I'm not sure who Leah Maria is. Hopefully someone lovely. You say, oh, like they're not. <laughs> I'm going to hold strong and say that, that they're a nice, lovely person. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Glad that's cleared up. <laughs> sure. An hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. I was curious what your plan was for rescheduling. When you said you had guests booked until May. Yeah. Into May now. <clears throat> yeah. It makes it hard because we can't. I mean, it's good. It's good to have people booked in and ready to go. But it's not good if you have to cancel. So I am also very glad. Because otherwise we would have had to move Jules to like... A couple of months from now, which would have sucked. Any suggestions for hats or headwear for someone who's self-conscious and doesn't like their haircut right now? Oh, interesting. Um, I'm a huge, I don't know if you can tell. I love a beanie. Uh, and I feel like it's, it's easy to, to think that, um, just any beanie should do, but not all beanies are created equal, dude. And especially if you're trying to like wear something to make you feel a bit more like comfy and protected, you know, you want something thick and you want something that isn't tight. The reason I wear this hat all the time is because it's really loose and it's really thick and it's great. And I feel very like, <laughs> you know, it just, it just plops on. And I, and I love that. Look for something, look for something that, that doesn't feel like constricting on your head. Cause a lot of them do for some reason. Um, I don't know how much hair you're dealing with, but also depending on where you live, you might be able to find or rock like one of those longer beanies and do like this sort of a thing. Hold on, hold on. We can sort of replicate it and do like this kind of, this kind of action, you know? So it, it depends, but it has to, yeah, it has to feel like, like thick and like it's protecting you, <laughs> you know? <laughs> An hour and 20 minutes from now is 3 p.m., not 4 p.m. Am I going crazy? Oh, my gosh. I think you're right. 
two hours and 20 minutes from now, right? Oh my gosh, I'm confusing myself now too. It's 1.40 right now, 1.45. 2.45, 3.45, So yeah, two hours, two hours and 20 minutes. Thank you very much for the correction. I was not expecting beanie talk today. You know, um, my love of beanies, I guess, has become enough of a thing <laughs> that sometimes people try to guess ahead of time whether or not I will be wearing one on stream. So, uh, yeah, I, I can, can confirm. I have some beanies that are just too tight and don't feel comfy. They feel like they hurt. If your ears stick out at all, oh my gosh. And it like pushes on your ears. No, absolutely not. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, yeah, it's hard. Cause you know, especially with, for some reason with hats, I guess socks even more so, <laughs> but <laughs> you don't feel like you can just try on a hat <laughs> before you buy it like a beanie. It feels, it feels very like you're getting your oils all up in there, you know? Um, but, but yeah, just like, does it, does the knitting feel like too tight? Does it, you know, can you put accessories on a beanie? Pins? Some people put pins on a beanie. You have to get special backings for them though. Because otherwise you've got that sharp shit <laughs> like poking into your brain. But yeah, some people will put pins on their beanies. You know, jughead style? I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. You can you can get pin backs that are flat. And then they won't hurt. And you you know, just like pin them in here so that it doesn't the texture isn't different on the inside if you're a texture girly. Jen said you should design your own beanies and call them coffee beanies. That's so good. <laughs> That's amazing. That's so good. <laughs> is that floor coffee back there? It sure is. This guy? Th this, th this guy? Oh, my little, my little fancy pants light isn't on. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah I watched a video the other day where somebody was like yeah well you know I really I've just kept the hair above my ears shaved not because I particularly like the look of undercuts but because I hate the feel of hair on my ears they're like, and I just, I always put my hair up in a ponytail because I just hated the feeling of it. So I just started shaving it. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> you know when you hear someone say a thing and it, and it registers as like so completely true for you? That, that was the feeling then. <laughs> Like, oh my God, yeah. I also hate when hair is on my ears. It's why even when my hair is down, you'll probably, if, you well, you don't care about this as much as I do, but like, imagine, if you will, my hair is down and doing this, right? I will pretty much always tuck my hair behind my ears so that it's not touching my ears. And it used to drive my parents crazy. <laughs> be like stop fucking with your hair um but I just hated it and now I notice I the reason that I'm really glad that I uh had to come to Jesus about that this was literally like a week ago <laughs> the 
The reason I ha I'm really glad is because I do that to Clark. And I didn't realize it. And I'm so glad I realized because she'll just be minding her own business and we'll be talking and I'll reach over and tuck her hair behind her ear. And she's like, stop that. <laughs> and I do it without thinking about it. And so after I watched that and I was thinking about it, I immediately was like, Clark, I want you to know, I'm so sorry that I always tuck your hair behind your ears. I think it's because I hate how it feels to have hair on my ears. And sometimes when I see your hair like all over the place, I think, oh my gosh, she must be so uncomfortable. But I'm realizing maybe you don't care. And she was like, I don't care. <laughs> I was like, okay. I was totally putting a feeling on you that didn't exist for you. And I'm so sorry about that. <clears throat> I hate this so obviously everyone else does too yeah I think a lot of us probably have something like that where you just kind of make the assumption that like this you know this thing is sort of annoying to everyone else um but I but it's not it's like my dad my dad is is 100% a texture person and I have so many memories of us uh, getting clothes and my dad immediately cutting the tags out of absolutely everything. And the day that Hanes, Hanes is his brand, the day that Hanes started just printing the tag information instead of putting a tag in the shirt, my dad was like, holy shit, my life is different now, right? <laughs> and my mom and I would be like, that's so much work. It's not actually so much work, but just like, the the attention to detail there of like it has to be cut a very specific way i don't want to be able to feel the tag at all you know and tags have never bothered me not not really it's not it's not something that i notice very much unless it's a particularly annoying tag um so potentially for my dad when he like sees tags sticking out of clothes and stuff, there's probably a feeling deep in his heart, not to tuck it back in, but to cut it off. <clears throat> Some tags suck, yeah. Specifically, you know what? The one that I do hate, pretty much every tag on jeans on the inside of jeans, why do those always hurt? Why are those always so obnoxious? They're scratchy, why? <laughs> I guess because it needs to stick to the denim really well. It's so annoying. Primark top tags are long and crunchy. Crunchy's a good word. Crunchy's a good word for it, dude. Sorry. Um, I cut a lot of tags off for Clark. Clark complains about tags a lot, which again, grew up with, very used to. Um, but when you're a grown ass man, you don't need to know what's on that tag. Not really. <laughs> I guess if you really care about laundry, but like if you're my dad and you have 30 of the exact same t-shirt, 20 of the exact same pair of sweatpants and you ain't growing anymore, you don't need to know what's on the tag, right? Um, the process of trying to figure out what clothes still fit my kid, <laughs> instead of it being like, oh, these say for two-year-olds on them, I have to have a pair of like, uh, here's my process, okay? I grab a pair of trousers that I know still fit her really well, lay them down, 
And then every pair that I pull out to try and figure out, like, do we need to get rid of this or not? I lay them on top <laughs> and go, what's the leg length here? What's the leg length difference? <laughs> If it can't survive the laundry, it wasn't meant to be. Oh my gosh, this morning, because we're talking about World Book Day is right around the corner. I'm so frustrated. Clark and I tried to like come up with a plan like a month ago for World Book Day, and now it's suddenly at our doorstep. And I'm like, no! Anyways, shot off a, an email to the teacher being like, hey, can my kid bring a jump rope to school? Which I'm pretty sure is going to be uh, met with a no, ma'am. <clears throat> But I hope she says yes, because it's such an easy costume then. But anyway, um, I was talking with all of the other parents about the fact that none of us have heard anything about World Book Day and, like, if there's a plan at the school for it or anything. And one of the parents was like, just in case, just in case we need it, does anybody have a gray T-shirt that my kid can use? And one of the other moms was like, I have a, a whoopsie from the laundry that wound up gray. <laughs> like that's so real I was like I have quite a few whoopsies from the laundry that are light pink slash purple if anybody is interested <laughs> I have I have pitched this so many times yeah the trousers that she really likes I keep being like we can turn those into shorts so easy so that you can keep wearing them. She would rather that the trousers vanish forever than, uh, than we like hurt the trousers. <laughs> and I'm so determined. I think I need to do it with a pair that she doesn't care about first. So I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a pair of trousers that she doesn't give a shit about and turn them into shorts with her. And that way she can see what the process is. Um, because to her, it's like, not kill your darlings. I'm not sure what the, what the right term for it would be. But like, she, she doesn't want to see them ruined. She just wants to know that they went somewhere else. You know? <laughs> Clark said, does this hurt the trousers? It literally, yeah. Yeah, that's also so true. If we had more than Clark, if we, you know, if we had two kids that were really close in age, yeah. I know I have so many parent friends <clears throat> that have said, like, I reached a point where everybody wears the same socks. <laughs> Everybody's got the same socks. They're a little big on one person. That's fine. I don't, I don't care. They're, everybody's got the same white socks and we, and we all share. We make sure that some people got some, some people got the other. <laughs> like, yeah. Trying to, trying to keep everything straight when you have more than one kid it must be so difficult. <clears throat> My husband and I do that with socks. So do my husband and I. We share socks. At a certain because at a certain point I realized that my socks, these like dainty foot socks that I kept buying, I hate them. <laughs> but you know what I love? The socks that are intended for like size 10 to 13 feet. I don't know why. They're not made for me. <laughs> but they're way more comfortable. So um, I just got us like 20 something pairs of those. And, and, and we share. He got himself some really nice socks before he went to Japan. I don't touch those. <clears throat> yeah, uh, for example, uh, Sam wears a size 13. And in England, I wear a size four. Big difference. I 
I'm a size 13 foot. It's so hard finding nice trainers in the UK. Yeah. It, yeah. Um, Sam and I, a while back, went to like four different stores that were like sneaker stores to be like, hey, what do you have in a size 13? And two of the places didn't have anything in a 13, which was so surprising to me. And then the other two places had, you know, like plain white sneakers or something, which is fine, but the, the variety is not there, the bigger your feet are. Where does the rest go? So imagine if you will, I'm not gonna bring my foot up here because it's not necessary. Imagine that this is a foot. <laughs> imagine that this is Sam's foot, right? And the heel is actually on the heel. Now imagine that it's my foot and the heel is all the way up here. I don't give a shit. I'll pull that thing all the way up. I don't care where the heel lines up. It's fine. All I wear are boots. So at the end of the day, it all gets squished up against my leg anyway. <laughs> I'm not too concerned about it. <laughs> Isn't that so funny? People can be so particular about one thing and not particular at all about another thing. I talk a lot about how overloaded I get with noise. Um, I cannot be in a room where there's like two different sounds happening if they're competing sounds, right? If like the TV is on and Sam is also watching a thing on his phone, absolutely not. Like immediately it makes me angry, <laughs> like just like, like anxious, you know? Um, and I've been that way for a very long time and, uh, it's, it's very funny to me that I can be so sensitive noise wise and really not sensitive at all touch wise <laughs> I don't I don't need my clothes to fit well at all in fact I kind of prefer when they don't you know <laughs> so What about trainers? I don't wear them. I have, okay. These, these boys, these guys, um, we're, we're quite a few years in on these boys. I wear them almost every day. I have another really cheap pair that are kind of the same shape, but are black. Um, and they are falling apart. Every time I go outside in them, my whole sock is wet. So I need to do something about that. Um, this is basically this or higher. This is what I wear. <laughs> Sneakers and I, uh, we had our time and it's not right now. So Wet socks sent straight from the devil. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I feel like a, a kid again. Because <laughs> so much of my childhood was me just running around in shoes that let all the water in. And my dad being like, put on different shoes. <laughs> What's wrong with you? But I'm an adult now. And I can walk around in shoes that let water in if I want. And think to myself, I should really find a cobbler or something. And then not do that. <laughs> as is my right yeah where do flip-flops stand with you i do not like every every time we get to the hot seasons sam and i will go and try to find sandals um I can never find sandals 
that feel comfortable for me ever. I, I really, I really don't like sandals. And I've joked a few times about just pulling a Steve, my dad, um, because my dad went through a really, really long, are you ready? A really long, many, many years long Burks and socks phase. Oh yes. Oh yes. Socks with the Birkenstocks. Absolutely. For years. And sometimes I'm like, maybe that's my destiny. I might just be slowly turning into my dad. And in some ways, that's fine. <laughs> I do have Crocs. Sam got me Crocs for my birthday. I have not worn them in a while because it's wet and freezing. But I do have them. An ad, oh, an ad break. <laughs> yeah. And look, I'll admit, part of it is an aesthetics problem. Part of it is me being like, what sandal on earth looks right with the shit I wear? None, maybe. Does your dad ever watch your streams? I don't think so. My mom does. Hi, mommy. My mom does. Um... I can imagine, so here, I'll set the scene for you. My mom will sit on the couch and is watching. My dad will come in to either, because my, 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 dad, um, my dad's had a bunch of health problems for a long time, but his, his back is like super messed up. He had undiagnosed scoliosis for a long time. Um, fell off a roof when I was a kid like just all sorts of stuff that has made his back you know he, he can't move around as well as he used to so he spends a lot of time doing this sucking on his teeth just sitting thinking about life you know and then he'll come inside and he'll go to the toilet or he'll make, him, make himself a latte and then he'll plop on the couch next to my mom and he'll watch the TV for a couple seconds. And then something will happen at a certain point that makes him go, nah. <laughs> at a certain point, something will happen on the TV and he'll go, he'll laugh or he'll go <laughs> and he'll get up and he'll leave. <laughs> my dad so uh I can imagine that if my mom is watching me on the tv I don't know how she watches me to be honest but if she's watching me on the tv and my dad comes in and he plops down and he watches it probably only takes a couple of seconds for him to go <laughs> and get up and leave so I don't think he watches much of the streams to be honest <laughs> where does he go next he goes back outside and sits in his little rolly chair and does this again. And if they're in the desert, my parents um, live in the desert in California for a couple months out of the year. Snowbirds. Is that what that's called? Um, it's really nice for their, their arthritis and stuff. They've got a tiny little place out there. Um, so he'll, he'll sit down in his little rolly chair and, and maybe the garage door will be up. It depends on whether or not he wants people to say hello to him. So if he wants people to say hello, if he wants to like, you know, squint at people as they walk by and get some goss, he'll leave the door open and he'll sit there, suck at his teeth and watch people walk by. And everyone's, if the door's open, everyone stops to say hi to him, which I love because my dad spent my entire childhood being like, I hate people. <laughs> 
I hate spending time with people. I hate talking to people that aren't my family. I have no desire. I could spend years by myself and be totally fine, right? And now, we're out of ad time. And now, a couple of months out of the year, he gets like all the social bombing that he needs and then is like, bye. <laughs> goes back to his little farm in the middle of the woods and doesn't talk to nobody for months. It's amazing. I know people really like talking to him because the area that it's like a little cul-de-sac that is entirely old people. It's very cute. And they all, they all, you know, some of them play pickleball. <laughs> some of them play pickleball every day and they come by and they walk their little dogs and stuff and they, Hey Steve. It's so cute to me after watching my dad be so antisocial for like, you know, 28, 29 years of my life for him to now have like a place that he goes for a couple months out of the year where everybody's like, Steve is so sweet, isn't he? And I'm like, he is. I'm shocked that anyone else knows that though. <laughs> I had never heard of pickleball. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know it was a real thing. Um, and then, uh, yeah, there's like a little court that was for tennis. And all the oldies were like, we don't play tennis. We play pickleball. So they turned it into a pickleball court and now they play pickleball all the time. So the last time that we visited, we watched we watched a bunch of people play pickleball and it was very fun. And then Clark was like, I want to play. And so we tried to play and she sobbed because it was really hard to hit the ball fair, but it was fun to play. <laughs> yeah. And then we came back here and Clark was like, I want to keep playing pickleball. Okay. And some of you might remember I came on stream and was like, Nobody in England plays pickleball. <laughs> it's, not, it's not much of a thing here. And I guess there was like a hot second where people played pickleball here. And then they were like, <laughs> no, this is not for us. Um, it's, like, it's like big table tennis. Like ping pong sort of thing. But like, but, but bigger <laughs> so you have a big paddle you don't have you don't have a uh whatever the fuck you call it in tennis you know what i mean you have a big paddle like in table tennis um but you're on a court running around like normal tennis racket thank you <laughs> Yeah, it's cute. It's like tennis for kids. Um, except I don't know a single child that plays it, but I know a lot of people over 60 that play it. You know one child that plays it. She doesn't though. She tried to hit the ball for an afternoon and, and was not able to. And that is the extent of Clark's pickleball experience. <laughs> I'm curious about your guest list for Geek Enders. Are all of the guests friends of you and Jesse? Um, I mean, it's a combination of like friends and currently, you know, we're, we're slowly doing this. So, so at the very start of it, it was like, let's just reach out to friends, right? <laughs> um, and now it's turning into, okay, let's reach out to like 
people that we are adjacent to, but we don't spend a lot of time with. Um, I'm looking at the list now. Yeah, I feel like um, it's turning into one of us knows this person and the other one doesn't, which is which is a good direction to go in, right? Um, and then we can start doing more like what TB used to do, which is just like cold reaching out to people and being like, hi, do you want to be on a podcast? So... Geek Enders is in an hour and 45 minutes, I think. It's 2.15, and it starts at 4. Yeah, we already, you know, again, not to, like, tout numbers, but not only were we on co-optional for years, but um, we've both been YouTubing slash streaming for more than 10 years right so we know yeah we know a lot of people um it's just whether or not some of those people we still know but we don't know how to get a hold of them anymore there's a lot of people like that where i'm like i haven't talked to this person in forever <laughs> when i needed to message jules i was like oh my god the last time I talked to Jules was over Twitter, and I don't have Twitter anymore. So how am I going to get a hold of them? I'm not sure. Because <laughs> I don't have them on Discord, which is my primary thing. I wound up having to message on Instagram. Um, so it's, you know. And some there have been a couple of people that I've reached out to and, and never gotten a reply. And I don't know if it's because they didn't see it or because they did what I do all the time, which is read it and go, I'll respond to that later. And then, and then didn't, you know, so. I'm now following Ashley Roboto because of Geek Enders. I'm so glad. Ashley's lovely. Blastrati, thank you so much for subscribing. Welcome to the cat gang. I hope you're having a great day. Um, you know what's funny is every single time we do Geek Enders, someone comes into chat and says, is Jesse even gonna be awake? So thank you for, for reaching our quota for that. doing my part wipes tears I'm not going to promise or confirm about anyone being on the podcast unless it's their week because we just never know what's going to happen and if stuff's going to get turned around or or whatever so Everyone gets on the podcast eventually if it runs long enough. Yeah. I think, I think last week somebody was like, how long do you guys plan on doing this podcast? It's not like a, it's not like a story bait. It's not, it's not like the who shit at my wedding podcast, you know, which is real. <laughs> it's not a podcast that has like a, like a, this is the mystery. And when the mystery is done, the podcast is done, right? Like it doesn't, it doesn't have an ending really. It's just. Is that what it's called? I'm trying to remember. Who shat, who shat at my wedding, I think is what it's called. Who shat on the floor at my wedding? <laughs> That's what it's called. It's very good. 
Um, if you wanna, if you wanna ever listen to that, that's a that's a recommendation from me. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's a it's a podcast. It's only a few episodes long, and it's a lovely couple, and they're like, yeah, we had our wedding on a boat. Um, so, uh, it's a, it's a closed mystery situation, right? Nobody could have come on the boat or gotten off of the boat. It definitely happened with the people that were on the boat at the time. So (laughs) they were like, we had, we had our wedding and reception entirely on this boat in the middle of the water. And, um, at some point someone just shat on the floor in one of the hallways and we have no idea who it is. And they're talking about how their wedding was like a few years ago, but they still talk consistently about like who, who the fuck just took a dump at our wedding, right? <laughs> and it turns into this whole thing where they're like, we've decided we're gonna get to the bottom of this. And they interview a bunch of people, a bunch of like people that were their guests. They get like a psychologist on to talk about, um, you know, like what could make someone do this. They get a ship's specialist to talk about the layout of the ship. It's so funny. You should you should listen to it. It's really funny. They're so unserious about it. They, one of the first episodes, they have like a lie detector machine and it does not work properly. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's really good characters involved, you know, so to speak. There's the person that was invited but was like uh an ex of of one of the two people and they're like was this about the fact that we dated? <laughs> and he's like, "What?" <laughs> they have um the person who uh hung out next to the toilets for way too long and everybody was like, "Yeah, why was he next to the toilet for so long?" bring them on for an interview. It's amazing. <clears throat> it's for real. Yeah, it's not it's not f- they goof during it, but the actual situation is a real situation and they actually interview their guests from the wedding. Sorry, someone sent me a picture of a dog, so I had to... I was contractually obligated to, in all caps, respond with, Oh my god, Pooper! So. So thank you for your patience. It's a podcast called Who Shat on the Floor at My Wedding? Our Wedding? Wait a sec. Who Shat on the Floor at My Wedding? (laughs) The tags are society, true crime, and comedy. Society is real. We truly do live in a society where a person would shit on the floor at your wedding. Do they find out who did it? I don't know. Do they? It's worth a listen anyway, regardless. So I'm not going to spoil it for you. (laughs) Yeah, society shit on the floor, actually. The patriarchy shit on the floor at the wedding. A true story involving two brides and one turd. (laughs) Is that that a summary written somewhere? Because that's so good. It's the tagline. I love that. That's so good. (laughs) This sounds like 
a disco Elysium side quest. It's it's great. Yeah. Uh, anyway, you're welcome for that. <laughs> Next time you're bored, throw that throw that sweet number on, you know. We went skating again. We tried to come up with a plan. So um, as, as, a, as a brief explanation for anybody who missed the skating of last week, we went to a roller skating thing and it was awesome, super fun, tons of people, which I was not expecting um, because my kid is really into roller skating and roller skates all over the house. So uh, we found a thing to go to and it was very fun. Um, but it's, 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 it's broken up. So like the first part is just, just skate around. Right. And we'll play a little bit of music. And at a certain point, the lights go out and it's like a full on like roller disco. The lights go out, they blast the music. It's awesome. But one of the people, um, in our group is five, you know? And learning to skate. So last time we went and we basically stayed until Clark was like, I'm, I'm so overwhelmed, right? I'm so overstimulated. There's adults everywhere going really fast because they're good skaters, right? There's adults everywhere going really fast. The music's so loud. I can't hear anything. They're, the lights are low, right? All this stuff. And we were like, absolutely. And, and to be fair to us, we kept trying to check in with her, like, are you doing okay? Should we leave? And she was like, no, because she was having fun, but, but she was overwhelmed, right? So we were like, let's go back this time. Let's just go until the lights go out. And when the lights go out, that is our cue to leave, right? <laughs> so we start skating, and Clark's having a great time. And uh, the lights go out. And I was like, that's our cue, dude. We got to go. And she was like, no. <laughs> no. We got to stay just for a few more minutes. I was like, okay. So we keep skating. The music's starting to get turned up louder. More and more people are showing up. I was like, we should probably go. And she was like, no, just a couple more minutes. <laughs> just a couple more minutes. And I was like, oh, God. Lunchbox, thank you so much. Welcome to the cat gang. So, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so at a certain point, I said, we're going to do one more loop. And we're gonna we're gonna loop de loop our way all the way over to our chair, put our shoes on, and walk out. She was like, "Okay." And and to be fair to her, she was fully the the heads up helped a lot. We went, we put our shoes on, we walked out. But the second we started walking, it was like the battery died. <laughs> it was, it was. She was having so much fun, so much fun, so much fun, so much fun. We tried to leave way earlier than we did last time, but the second we were in shoes and she needed to walk, she was like, can you carry me? I'm so tired. And I was like, I can't, dude. I'm carrying our shoes and shit. So you got to walk. And she was like, I'm so tired. though." <laughs> My poor baby. So by the time we got to the car, she was like, I just want to take a nap and I want McDonald's and I, I need a blankie and I'm so tired. <laughs> it's like, oh baby, we tried. I tried so hard to keep us from getting to this point again. She just, she just loves the skates. She just, she's just, she just loves the rink, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the children they yearn for the rank it's true it's true and I figure you know 
it won't be as bad there's there's a stamina aspect to this as well right like she's been skating a bunch but at our house where she can just skate back and forth a couple of times and then sit if she wants um this is like continuous skating for like an hour to an hour and a half with a bunch of music and people everywhere, you know, and it's fun, but it's so much more exhausting. Um, and I think the, if we consistently go, which it sounds like we probably will, if we're consistently going, then, you know, the, the like exhaustion aspect will get better over time. But also, she will hopefully start to notice when she's like, okay, I'm hitting, I'm, I'm close to the wall, I should stop, you know? <clears throat> she's never been ice skating, no. Yeah, that's what I figure. I had said I had said this before, but like typically my kid, if she falls doing something, it's instantly like the world is over, you know. Um, but if she falls while skating, she's back up. I'm fine. <laughs> you know, having fun, doing something that's really fun makes such a huge difference. There is no wall, only a door I haven't made yet. I kind of love that. <laughs> Sam's never skated, apparently, because he was like, I don't know how I would do it skating. He loves ice skating, which is a, a little factoid I did not have about him. He loves ice skating, and apparently... Um, does really well ice skating so we have to go ice skating now uh but he was wondering i maybe some of you can chime in on this he was wondering if it would be easier for him to do rollerblading or inline skates is that what they're called rollerblading instead of skating Definitely in line. Okay. I think blades are easier to start with than skates. I do not agree. I have such an easier time with skates than rollerblades. I fell constantly when I was trying to learn how to rollerblade. easily influenced. I want to buy, buy rollerblades now. Yeah, I figure it's like knitting and crocheting, you know, <laughs> both have the potential to be easier for someone. My neighbor usually builds a small ice ring in front of their house on the field in Quebec. F 
fe- the feeling of ice skates and inline skates is very different. I would rather ice skate IMO. Yeah, I went through um, back when I was like every day going into work for the game station before we turned into Polaris. Um, back in the day when we were still the game station, there was a period of time where the game station office was a 30 minute walk from my house. And I was like, this is my time. I'm going to get rollerblades. And I'm going to rollerblade into work every day. And I will learn to rollerblade so well if I do that. And I was going in on rollerblades every day. And I never got any better. And I was always terrified. (laughs) I always thought I was going to roll right into traffic. It was horrifying. I never got better. Never, ever. Uh... I have done better after just a couple days of skating with Clark than I ever did on rollerblades. So. A safe environment probably helps too. Yeah. Yeah, again, I think it's just for whatever reason, sometimes one is easier than the other. I I cannot figure out how to knit to save a life, but I can crochet just fine, you know? Sometimes one clicks and the other doesn't. That's true. I can knit, but I can't for the life of me get crochet. Like, what? What is that about? Roller skates and me do not jive. I should just buy a used pair of blades from someone else that thought this was a good idea. 100%. The number of skates and roller blades that get put up for sale... Because, because yeah, people will get them being like, this is going to be my new thing. And then it's, it can be so hard sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you are not late for geek enders no you've still got over an hour my wife adored crochet but always struggled with knitting it's a, it's a very common story to prefer one over the other Forty-one months. Thank you so much for the resub, Bericato. I hope you're doing good.
My sister recently began crocheting rugs. I'm amazed. I'm amazed how quickly she learned. There are a couple of different like rug tufting techniques and things like that, that I've wanted to take the time to learn. Um, and I keep thinking to myself, like with a, with a big enough frame, uh, it would be really fun to make like a little rug for like one of the bathrooms or something just as like a tester. I used to, um, Oh my gosh, what is it called? when you have like a, like a webbing and um, you have this like little tool that you put small pieces of yarn through. What is that called? Not punch needle, no. No. Latch hook. Thank you so much. I knew somebody would say it eventually. I used to latch hook a lot because there were little latch hook kits that you could get. Basically, it's it's literally the name. It's a little hook that has a latch on it, and you put a small piece of yarn on, put it through the hole, and then and then pull up and it like loops it on there essentially. Um and that was really fun and basically just made a rug. Um, but punch needle looks really fun as well. And I watched so many videos of people doing punch needling. Um, another thing that people will do is take rope and crochet around the rope to make spiral rugs, which I grew up with a spiral rug. So part of me is like, oh, that would be so fun to have one in the house. Um, yeah, there's, there's like a bunch of different things that you can do uh, textile wise to make rugs. And I think about that all the time. I use a latch hook to pick up dropped stitches and knitting. Oh, cool. Suddenly, everyone in my family got a custom rug as a gift. It was great. I love that. A punch needle is basically like, um, it's a tool that yarn goes through. So the part that you're holding onto, it goes all the way through down to like a pointy tip, basically. Um, and as you are like like punching, poking the needle, this thick needle through your fabric, um, it's taking the yarn along with it. Uh, so from what I understand, there's a there's a learning curve there because um, depending on how you're doing it, literally, there's nothing on the other side keeping the yarn where it's supposed to be. <laughs> so if you, if you mess up, what's nice is you literally just pull on it and the whole thing comes out. But, um, but also if you pull on it, the whole thing comes out. Right? <laughs> uh, I don't have one here or any way to show you. But if you look up punch needling, you can watch a video of someone doing it. Easy peasy. I was caught Geek Enders on YouTube. I had a hard time finding when you were streaming it for today. Do you announce the streams anywhere? Um, I don't use Discord. Or not Discord. I don't use Twitter is, I think, the big issue when people are looking for, like, announcements. Um, our, our Discord is where I say if there's a schedule change. Um, and I will, like, I, the whole weekend I had changed our title to say, like, Geek Enders will be today at 4 p.m. GMT with Jules, right? Um, 
I unfortunately don't have a social media that I consistently use. Which I thought wouldn't be as big of an issue as it as it is. But yeah, typically Geek Enders is on Fridays at at the same time. Fridays, four PM GMT, eight AM Pacific time. Uh, we moved it because of some personal stuff that I had going on. And so we, uh, rescheduled, unfortunately today at the same time worked for everybody. Sam and I started watching Freer in. Um, I I had said that both of us had watched like a couple of episodes. It turns out I thought I had watched more than I had because the Freer in episodes are like two stories in one episode. It's that sort of a thing where like each story is like 10 to 15 minutes ish. So I thought I had watched more than I had. <laughs> and then Sam was like, cool. So that's as much as we've watched. And now we're on episode three. And I was like, no, that's not what just happened. He was like, yeah, we only watched two episodes. No way. That's no. What do you mean? But uh, what about all this shit that was going on? And he was like, yeah, those were it was I promise you and literally had to show me the episode title because I didn't believe him. <laughs> So anyway, uh, yeah, free run's very good. Uh, I like it a lot. We've seen, um, I think, <laughs> I think we've seen a few episodes now. Um, I'm second guessing it currently, but uh, we've at least seen four. <laughs> we started it over because I couldn't, I, I was like semi falling asleep during the first episode when we originally watched it. So... We've seen definitely the first four, at least maybe five, but I'm, I'm, I can't guarantee to be honest, because again, I'm, I'm getting confused about how many episodes we've watched because I can think of a way more stories than that that have happened, you know? Dungeon Meshi is also good. Yeah, we've been watching that. We're letting it stack up now. Um, because neither of us really like the watch one episode and then wait until next week to watch more thing. We like to let them stack up if possible. Unfortunately, we have a lot of free run that's stacked up, but like, um, zero leveling and dungeon meshy and those sorts of things. Um, we're letting sit for a while. Yeah, we're letting them cook, exactly. I'm not worried about that, because again, I'm not really on social media anymore, so I don't get spoiled on anything. I don't get spoiled on anything. I, I, I never know what's going on, for better or for worse. Sam, Sam gets spoiled a lot, unfortunately. Why does it have a German title? Why does what have a German title? I'm on the one piece grind with my girlfriend. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> oh, free run. I didn't even know that was a German word. No idea. It's the name of the main character. <laughs> Apparently, everybody's name in that show is German, someone said. So, there's your answer. They thought it would be cool for everybody to have German-sounding names. 
or actual German names. Freerun, to pitch it for you, Freerun is, is great. It's um, the very first episode is the end of a 10 year long adventure um, with a, uh, an elven mage named Freerun and uh and her buddies that that they've that she's been adventuring with for 10 years um and it i'm not going to tell you exactly what happens in the first episode but but the theme of the show at least at first is sort of tackling the idea of like these fantasy races that would live for like hundreds maybe up to a thousand years and what it would mean to them to develop relationships with people that might live 80 you know and how you would view time differently and how you would um value and experience those friendships um so when people say oh my god it's it's really good but you know it's also it's also really sad sometimes um it's because that's the subject matter <laughs> yeah we were waiting for our food um we were sitting on the couch watching it waiting for our food and we had paused for some reason and sam was like our food's gonna be here in like 10 minutes and sort of like waited <laughs> I was like, yeah. And he goes, I guess we can watch more. I really don't want to be tearing up when the guy shows up to deliver our food, though. <laughs> yeah, just hey man thanks so much sorry we're watching anime and they're like i get it don't worry about it dude we're watching it on crunchyroll <clears throat> As always, do not spoil shit in chat. I'm not saying anybody has. I'm trying to preempt it. Don't allude to things in chat. Don't spoil things in chat. Just if the pitch sounded interesting to people, they'll watch it. Yeah, Delicious and Dungeon and Dungeon Meshi are the same are the same show. Yes, that's true. Undead Unluck. I've never even heard of that. Hold on. Undead. Oops. Unluck. Ouch.
what? <laughs> this sounds weird, guys. And I've read a lot of manga and watched a lot of anime. Yeah, I've seen a ton of Sign of Affection clips. What was nice when I was doing the, the like anime season preview stuff forever ago, what was nice about that is typically, uh, cause I would try, I would try to do like at least 13 different shows, you know? And so we would always wind up hitting the, the normal stuff, but we also hit some like weird shows that not a lot of people heard of really. Um, and I now don't really have, unless, unless I am seeking it out, uh, I'm just hearing about the same shows over and over, you know? Thank you for the raid, Millman. Welcome. <laughs> Undead on luck is about rules lawyering your powers as hard as possible. Nice. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> Thank you, Millman. Have a good one. We're getting into Tolkien. <laughs> I remember reading the manga for Undead Unluck. It's very interesting, but also very weird. Dude, since we stopped doing Manga Pod, I like barely read manga anymore, which is so sad because I really enjoy it. And I, I can like slam through manga. I want to start reading more manga again. I was I was trying to read manga on um, the Kindle. We have an old Kindle that I like booted back up and started reading on. And I was like, oh, I should read some manga on this. But it's visually it's it doesn't always. It can be a little like I don't know if artifact is the right word. Some of the imagery isn't super clear. It's just the way, how, however those Kindle screens work, the, the clarity and the detail isn't there when it tries to do pictures. It's fine for text, but the, the pictures really just aren't great for it. Oh, yeah, I like I like the little Kindle, the little old one. You know, can I don't think 
the the Kindles that aren't also meant to be tablets, <laughs> you know, I don't I don't think they're ever super fast anyway. Um, so I wasn't I wasn't too annoyed with uh, how quick or not quick it was, but. Yeah, I think reading manga on the iPad would be a good idea, and I'll just stick to novels and novellas and things on the Kindle. I don't think it's... It just ain't built for that, you know? The Kindle? Oh yeah. Yeah, the it's um you you buy books and then download them onto the Kindle and then you can take it wherever. You don't need an internet connection or anything. One of those frames going on the wall. Do not ask me this. Do not ask me this. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? They're up. They're in there. They're it's where they're supposed to be. <laughs> Again, a reminder that my husband looked me in the eyes and because I was talking about how I want my office to be better put together. And he looked me in in my eyeballs and said, yeah, what's what's going on with that? There's something. There's something that's supposed to be here. What is it? What is it? I was like, I need the shelf. I need the shelf in there. And he was like, oh, yeah. Did you ever take that apart? And I said, yeah. <laughs> Months ago. Yes, I did. Oh, my gosh. Telosi. I'm now addicted to ripping wallpaper off of the walls in this house. There are a few spots where it just comes off so easily that if if I have the audacity to pick just a little bit, it's getting ripped. It's getting ripped off the wall. And now there are so many spots throughout the house where it looks fine, 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 fine. Big rip. Fine, 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 fine. <laughs> yeah it's like three layers fused together I remember us talking about this yeah yeah the room that I originally started trying to take the wallpaper out on it it does not want to come off the walls not for love or money but if you go anywhere else in the house, the wallpaper is basically held up with spit. You can just. And then it just rips off, dude. <laughs> but of course, the spot that I had to try to take it off of first 
was not like that at all. So I was like, oh my God, getting this wallpaper off of these walls in this house is going to be a nightmare. Just that room, just that one room. And I still haven't finished that room because it's such a pain in my asshole. I moved on. Forks. <sighs> We're on an ad break. An ad break. We're on an ad break. An ad break. An ad break. <laughs> ads coming in hot with no warning how weird it's so it's so like them can we get a gif of the wb frog dancing during ad breaks why when i'm right here hello my baby hello my honey hello my ragtime gal send me a kiss by wire Baby, my heart's on fire. You don't need a frog. <laughs> That's true. I need a top hat that I can just pull out of nowhere. <laughs> First time catching a live stream in years and it's a break song. A break bit. It was a break bit. WB coming for you. Are you going to stream straight until Geek Enders? Yeah. That's the plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because typically I would stream until 3. And normally our sound check and shit starts at like 3.30, 3.45. So what's the point? You know, there's no reason to take it down. Break the bit. No! Oh, break bit. Yes! <laughs> yes, a break bit. You get it. I lost it, but you got it now. <laughs> worth paying the subscription to watch the bits. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, there is Sunforged today. Hold on, allow me to add it to our already very long and spicy title. Plus, Sunforged at 8.30 p.m. GMT. Done. Save. Walk in on an ad break banner. Guess what? It's gone now. That was you. That was all you. You did that. You're welcome. I'm so far behind on Sunforged. It's been very fun. We just hit our 20th episode, which I know is like a big time commitment. It's hard to, it's hard to catch up. But if it helps, we probably have another like 100 to go. <laughs> and Joe is really good about occasionally doing catch up streams that are just like, here's everything that's happened. So now you can watch starting from here sort of a thing. Um, I think he's only done one so far, but. Who or what is Sunforged? Um, it is a D&D &D show that is run by our lovely friend, Joe Fudge. Uh, we did a D&D &D campaign called Godforged. That was his first one. 
and it finished up and he was like i have an idea for the next one same world but different continent and um we would call it sunforged and i would love to do it with the exact same people um so we did so the group is it's it's nice because the group has a lot of rapport you know <laughs> we uh we did a over 100 session campaign that that actually finished and resolved um and then started a whole new campaign together so it's good this one is darker um it's a bit more in lore wise it's a bit more like bloodborne -y, i think he said he'd do one this week. Dear Joe, my chat is asking if they are going to get a recap episode soon, as they would love to start watching Sunforged. Thanks so much, XOXO Duger. Is Sunforge on audio anywhere? No, and I think it would be really smart for Joe to put it up audio-wise, but from talking to Jesse, because Jesse puts up the audio for Geek Enders, it's like not as straightforward, I guess. It's not, it's not as simple as just like, and now I slap this on a podcast website, <laughs> apparently. Um, so it's, it's just like yet another process that he would have to do that I don't know if he, he might not think that it would be worth the time, that not as many people would really listen to it audio only, but I also kind of prefer D&D &D stuff as podcasts instead of like like watching them, you know? <clears throat> part of me wants to and we all know I'm bad with time so uh, my time management is dog shit so I probably shouldn't offer to do this but part of me wants to offer to go through and just like rip the audio off of every episode because it would be a really good way for me to remind myself of all of the lore bombs that we've had so far <laughs> Yeah, well, I loved Dungeons and Daddies because they really obviously like put a lot of care and attention into, um, you know, like adding little things here and there audio wise to really like zhuzh up its existence as a podcast, you know? My first experience watching Joe DM was the Twilight one shot. Good. <laughs> the Twilight one shot was so good, dude. Yeah, I tried to reuse Michael. Michael! I tried, to re I tried to reuse Michael, my vampire from the Twilight one shot. I tried to reuse him in another one shot, and he didn't, he didn't tonally fit. <laughs> he didn't really fit. I tried watching Critical Role as a podcast, but there are a lot of jokes that assume that you can see them. Yeah, that would be what I, that I think would be the big thing that I would wonder about is like stuff that just doesn't translate into audio. How do you deal with that? I guess 
you know, I guess something that would help not in the moment of the joke, but like at the beginning of every episode be like, Hey, um, as a reminder, this is a, you know, this is a, uh, a, a campaign that also typically has video. So occasionally you might miss out a little bit on what's going on, etc. Yeah, that's true. Critical role, you're right. Critical role especially would be so hard because they're literally all in the same room. Like <laughs> Dungeons and Daddies also has plenty of episodes where they're all in the same room, but they are exclusively an audio podcast. So they'll be like, FYI, so-and-so is doing this right now, right? Like they describe what's happening if, if something visual is happening because they're not they're not filming themselves you know they're only recording themselves yeah audio only D, &D i think is perfect for theater of the mind right a show like hellions would be perfect for a podcast because there's literally never a map it's it's entirely theater of the mind even the combat the combat is rare because it's mostly like a a time loop mystery game it it doesn't have that much combat in it you know hi honey baby girl it's okay can i take you off of my monitor though please no i freaked her out <laughs> ladybird's playing dead on my monitor right now Yeah, I sorry, I totally forgot to say this, but that was what I was going to follow up with, is that one of the benefits for Joe's shows is that he never shows the roles, so we always have to say the roles out loud anyway. Um, so yeah, you would miss out on the map. Uh, during combat, I think things would be quite confusing because you don't have that visual aid. But in terms of knowing whether or not somebody rolled well or not, or what they rolled, um, that always gets spoken. That always gets communicated. Joe said, Dear Dodger, yes, I'll work on one this week. I was being slow. My bad. All the best. JF Fudge. <laughs> oh, bye, buddy. She was like, I'm free. <laughs> IIRC, he said every seven episodes. He did say that. But I believe there's only been one, and we're on episode 20 now, which is why we... Which is why we poked. Yeah, Joseph Fudge Fudge. His, his Christian name. <laughs> Today will be episode 19. Last week he said it was episode 20. So today would be 21. Feel free to argue with Joe though. I'm not, I'm, I'm not looking. The bug flew away after Fudge replied. That's so true. They were listening in. Joseph Fudging sure. Mm -hmm, that's his name. That's the guy. Hold on. Slash Joe Fudge.
you're right. There are 18 on YouTube. Follow up question. No, that's okay. <laughs> it's fine. You're right, though. There's only 18 episodes up on YouTube. Oh, good. I'm wearing the same beanie in this video. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. It was put up six days ago, though. Was he just wrong? Few and Faye between. Which episode was this? What were we doing? Well, yeah, today is today is Sunforged, so it would time out properly. Does he delay uploads? I thought he puts them up immediately. It's fine. I'll ask him about it later. Yeah, I'm I'm terrified to do GTA RP. I feel like I'm I'm missing too much like establishment knowledge at this point. <laughs> Cuz I said to Sam, I was like it always it always feels like if you want to be really successful on in GTA RP, you have to like commit a bunch of time to it. And he was like, "That is super duper not true." He said, "If you have a good character idea, and you only show up for like a certain amount of time as part of that character idea, or if it just makes sense, then then that's it." You know. Um. I think it because I'm married to Sam and I know that when he's like chin deep in GTA RP, he's doing it all the time. And also that he's a cop character. So they want him playing all the time. <laughs> I'm like, I just don't have, I cannot commit that, that much. You know, I can't do it. Weirdos are good for short lengths. Yeah, that's how it seems. If you have like a bit <laughs> and you just show up and do that bit for a couple of hours and then leave, then that works great. Yeah, I still think that that's my favorite idea is is um, like an AM radio character. And I would just show up and basically do like a weird AM radio podcast about aliens. And then I would log off. <laughs> and then I'd leave. Yeah, exactly. I get abducted every day and the people don't believe me. <laughs> That would be so funny, honestly. To get like the Chaluminati guys to do to do ad runs. <laughs> Yes, that's very good. We are still talking about GTA, yeah. We've barely talked about it. <laughs> it
in universe ad runs are, are a fun detail, yeah. <laughs> From the way that you put it, it seemed like, God, are we ever going to stop talking about GTA? And I was like, we've, we've barely talked about it. <laughs> oh, now I've got 12 credits, huh, Audible? This bitch, am I right? <laughs> Last time I logged in, it was like, you have zero credits. And I was like, well, I know that's not true. try to catch all the Connie content I can. Sam is so good at making like sassy lady characters in GTA RP that everyone just loves. I remember talking about that when I was doing um, Neon Divide, and we were talking about how like everybody's got different different amounts of stamina for VRRP, and um, the d the discussion was basically like some people literally they'll come on for an hour and be like, and that's it, I'm done, and other people can literally go forever <laughs> neon divide is the name yeah uh it is not currently they've been working on season four for a very 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 long time now um and uh yeah I don't, I don't know. I, I stay in the Discord. I still have a, a spot, a character role spot. Um, but I am very curious. We haven't gotten, like, I don't, I, I don't think. We've gotten, like, significant updates in quite a while. Um, they'll just occasionally be like, we are still working on it. Promise, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it was coming up the other day because uh, we were talking about me making a VTuber model. And I had said, yeah, I want to be a mushroom person. And understandably, everyone was like, are you going to be moral? And I said, no. Um, but that a lot of the like inspiration imagery sort of stuff um, was was directly pulled from things that I put together for moral. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah, it's a no but yes. Hi Summer. I was literally about to message you. Um, I think I want to, I think I want to hit up, uh, one of, one of your people that makes like little, little goofy models.
because it's going to be a while before my my big one gets done i think probably probably quite a long time ah <laughs> <gasps> yes thank you uh yeah for any of you who have never seen moral so again this is not what it would be but same um vibe in certain ways do I have moral on here anywhere? I'm actually not sure that I do. Might not. Hold on, where is Swishy? Swishy has, oh, actually. No, here we go. Here we go, here we go. Moral. Shroom gone. No. Um, okay. So I grabbed two pictures. This one and this one. There we go. Okay, so this is my original um, uh, drawing that I did as like an idea for what I wanted. Be Moral is a character that got originally um, designed as like a, a small a small thing, and in VRRP I was like, and now they'll get bigger. So this was the design for them bigger. They have four arms. I don't think I want to do the forearm thing. Sam said I should still go for it, but <laughs> forearms sounds like such a pain in the butt. <laughs> um, and then this was what Swishy made, which turned out great. Um, and so it had like a hair toggle to have short or long hair. Um, because I, I wanted to be able to like have more effeminate presentation or masculine presentation depending. Um, but I wanted it all to be just kind of like, like grungy, weird rocker mushroom kid, you know? So that's moral. So again, it's not, it's not going to be moral, but that's the original character, the original mushroom character that I played as. <laughs> toad. Apparently, I do sound like Toad, so you know. <laughs> you can start getting stuff set up. Maybe not dark tide music, you know. Ah, oh, gold saucer. How I love thee. me. <laughs> 